Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and ITY video. Today, I'm joined by Kurt Schmacker. He is the Senior Product Manager at Parallels, and he's going to showcase Parallels Desktop 18, which just got launched, and it's compatible with M2 Macs and uh, Windows 11 and Mac OS Ventura. So, Kurt, welcome and over to you. Thank you so much. I'll do it. I'll start my standard presentation, and then we'll go into a demo. Great. Okay. So... Uh, I haven't updated these slides since that we did the, the early releases earlier this week. So it still says embargoed, even though we passed the embargo date. And what I do typically is before I get into the details of Parallels Desktop, I want to spend just a moment to give an update on Corel. So as you know, uh, Corel acquired Parallels in 2019. And shortly after that, the next year, uh, they appointed a new C CEO, Krista, and she's been assembling a team of experts and leaders to take Corel into the, into the next generation. The plan is to focus on five or four uh, parallels, four product lines, Corel Draw, Mind Manager, Parallels, and WinZip. We'll talk mostly about parallels today. And you may have heard also, just a, a few weeks ago, we bought a company called Iwungo that allows us to add uh, secure remote desktop capabilities to our, our RAS product. You're going to see more and more announcements from Corel in the future, and I'll, I'll suggest you keep uh, keep uh, your eye peeled for them. But now let's move to Parallels Desktop. So Parallels has several products. Some are in the consumer space, some are in the business space. But as its flagship product, Parallels Desktop is in both spaces. And I'll talk about consumer features and I'll talk about business features today and in my demo. If we look at the kind of five features of Parallels Desktop that I want to talk about, I want to talk about OSs, I want to talk about hardware, mm -hmm. I want to talk about three editions, standard, pro, and business, because we've added features to each of those, and I'll talk about those now. So for host OS, of course, you know Ventura is coming out. It hasn't been released to the public yet, our plan is as soon as Apple releases Ventura to the public, we will fully support Ventura as a host OS and a guest OS in Parallels Desktop 18. It runs now, but it's a moving target. So we have to wait until it's finally released for we really officially support it. And our data shows that Parallels Desktop customers move to the latest OSs really pretty quickly. So I think the most important OSs for Parallels Desktop 18 are Windows 11 and Mac OS Ventura as either a host or a guest. Well, Microsoft is always coming out with updates. We have to add new features, double check things work. And of course, Ventura adds a bunch of new features and we want to take advantage of those in Parallels Desktop 18. The one that's getting the most press is Stage Manager. So the yeah. engineering team asked me to do the, to do the test of Stage Manager with Ventura. And I gotta tell you, it worked the first time just perfectly. I, I'll suspect that the Apple engineers never thought they'd see Stage Manager piles with Windows apps on the side <laughs> of the screen like this. Yeah. It's really nice. <clears throat> and I can't wait to move to Ventura on my main machine because of this one feature. <clears throat> Me too. Yeah, I'm, I'm running both yeah. the Windows 11 uh, VM and Mac OS as a, as a guest OS, and it's running beautifully. Me too, but I want to run it as a host. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to wait till it's a little more stable and then you do a final release. I just want, don't want to ask for any trouble. That's it. That's it. Now, as you know, Parallels Desktop runs on both Intel Macs and M Series Macs. And we try to keep the feature parity between those two platforms the same. But there are some areas where it's not possible. And nowhere is this more clearly shown in the OSs you can run in a virtual machine. On an Intel machine, <clears throat> you can go all the way back to Windows XP or Mountain Lion or Lion as a, in a VM, but those are only available as Intel OSs. So on, in the M series machines, you need an ARM OS and there are only a smaller number of those. So Windows 10, Windows 11, Ventura and Monterey, and a few Linux distributions. That's growing with passage of time, but it's gonna take a while. I suspect we're never gonna see a ARM version of Windows 7. There'd be no reason to do so. So mm -hmm. if you wanna run Windows 7, if you wanna run Mac OS Lion, 
need to keep your Intel machine around after you move to uh, M series machines. And that's what I'm doing. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, let's talk about hardware. So Apple has released a number of interesting hardware releases. The one that I think affects Parallels desktop the most is the ProMotion display, because it has a faster refresh rate. So in the past, Apple refresh rates were limited to 60 frames per second. And I'll show you that in my demo. But now with ProMotion, you can get faster and you can even set it. So when you set your ProMotion refresh rate in Mac OS, we will automatically sync that with the Windows refresh rate in Parallels Desktop. And this is needed for applications like uh, video uh, processing and things like this that really need to be the same as they're gonna be shown. If you're um, lucky enough to have a Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra, and you can assign it, you can give it lots of RAM and lots of cores, you can actually give a virtual machine 62 gigabytes of RAM and 18 CPU cores. And that's pretty cool. If you do yeah. so, Windows runs almost twice as fast. And that's really great. Um, I have not yet convinced my wife that a Mac Studio is something I really need. I'm I'll keep working on it, but I don't know. Those are, they're kind of expensive. Yeah, you probably you might have more luck when you tell her, "Look, it's the second generation, darling. It's so much better. Good thing I didn't uh, buy the first point. generation." Good point. But we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll always be trying. So let's talk about the various editions of Parallels Desktop: Standard, Pro, and Business. So we, we've added features in each of these editions in Parallels Desktop 18. In 18 Standard Edition, a lot of people play Windows games. And to play a game, like a, a, an Xbox game or a, or a game from Steam you see here, you often need a controller. We had a way to connect a controller to Parallels Desktop in the past, but I, I'll, I'll be very frank and admit, it was kind of clunky, it was hard to do, you had to configure it, and even I failed on occasion. So that's not good. Hmm. So we completely scrapped that implementation. We went back and we worked with Apple to make it be the case that all you have to do now with a game controller is connected to the Mac, it'll automatically work in parallels. No configuration inside Windows at all. And I'll show you that in my demo. It's really cool. It gets us out of the business of saying which controllers we support. Like, work, if it works with your Mac, we're fine. Doesn't work with your Mac? Hey, we can't deal with that. So it, that's what we're going to do. It, it looks as though you gave Question? the code to control the controllers a power wash, like because you've got power wash simulator yeah. there. <laughs> that's exactly what that game is. I mean, I play some strange games, but power washing a Jeep is not exactly my idea of fun, but. But it's taken over the world. That turns out to be a really, really popular game. Yeah. Okay. So controller uh, connectivity is improved because of Apple's new controller framework that is in Ventura and Mavericks. Now, we had some requests from users to improve our USB 3.0 implementation, especially for live data streaming devices. Actually, I was just going to say, guess, when, you, when you said Mavericks, you really meant Monterey, right? I actually did. You're correct. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Monterey. Okay. It's all right. Mavericks, All right. Too old. I've been yeah. around too long. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll bet you've actually seen the device on the right. It's used by eye doctors to take high resolution pictures of the human retina to diagnose various things. I've and seen something similar yeah. right here. There was a, a Parallels desktop user who was an eye doctor who had one of these, and he had to keep an old Windows machine around the office just to connect to this thing and run it. And he said, guys, can't you make that work with Parallels desktop? And so he looked into it, looked what was possible, what was needed to, to, to increase our ability to connect to live data streaming devices, and we're able to do so. And so now we can run that from Mac. And there's an example of an end user story that's really hilarious, I think. Uh, yeah. I, I don't think that would have risen to the level of we're going to do this unless he had asked us. Talk about customer support and, you know, making yes, exactly, sure that, yeah. Exactly. yeah Very important. It. Now, as you know, more than 200,000 Windows applications are successfully used by Parallels desktop users around the world. And that's great. But there are a few that don't work. And we want to, to decrease that number as every year if, we, if possible. This year, what we did was we re-implemented the Parallels tools 
to be ARM native. Parallels tools are this pieces of software that connect the OSs in the guest and in the host. And the implications of this are that some applications that wouldn't launch before in Parallels as of 17 now launch in 18, and that's great. In addition, there were some users who had some problem with shared folders with Microsoft Office apps. And by redoing the tools uh, in our, our native code, we, we got rid of all those issues. So it's a big improvement for users. Both more, more things work and bugs that were present in a commonly used application are now taken care of. So um, the engineers uh, double checked and they found very few Intel-based apps that don't run uh, in Windows for ARM on an M1 or M2. Um, they're saying less than one tenth of a percent, uh, one hundredth of a percent. That might be a little high, but it is true that even high-end games, games and high-end CAD software works just fine on an M1 Mac inside Windows for ARM. I wish I could take credit for that. That's primarily Microsoft's work because they implemented an Intel emulator inside Windows for ARM. What we did was made sure that worked inside Parallels Desktop. Yeah. Yeah, I have looked at the uh, Parallels forum and you can see people asking about this game or that game or some graphics not working. And, you know, you can see the responses from the Parallel guys. And, of course, with each new version of or each update to Parallels, you know, things get fixed and it's worthwhile contacting Parallels on the forum to ask for support for this or that as the demo with the, has, uh, has the Retina it also. You know the, the story about explained. Overwatch, right? Tell me, I will remind us. So Overwatch came out and our users said, hey, it works pretty well in Parallels Desktop, but none of the characters have any hair. <laughs> so we thought, oh, wow. So we called Blizzard and they, we put their graphics guys together with our graphics guys. They figured out the issue and they fixed it. So Overwatch really plays pretty well. We're real mm. pleased about that. And Blizzard was, it was, was really pleasant to deal with. And they don't have a Mac version. So this just gives them more customers and they're happy. Absolutely. Okay. Let's move down to the Pro Edition. As you know, the Pro Edition is primarily for developers mm -hmm. and high-end users that need more power in their virtual machines or need features that ordinary users wouldn't care about at all. We have added some features in the Pro Edition. We've added the ability to control a Mac virtual machine with the command line interface. This is very important to a developer who wants to test their products in a variety of OSs and have the test run automated. Um, have you ever seen the network conditioner run? It's pretty cool. Right. Network conditioner allows a, a developer on the fly to change the parameters of the network. I want to make this a noisy network. I want to drop so, a certain percentage of packets. I want to make it slow. I want to make it a, a, a cellular network. And on the fly, you can do that. I gave a demo of this to the developers conference, and it was still talked about later on in the week. Like, Did you see that guy from Parallels? He could actually change the network settings on the fly. <laughs> it's very cool. It's like having a network it, virtual machine uh, that you can modify exactly however right. you want. And, so, yeah. It's very important. I want to test my app I'm developing in what, how does it behave on a noisy network. Mm. Now I can do it right inside a virtual machine. Nice. I've also talked to people in the security uh, software areas who, whose job it is to analyze and fight anti viruses. And so they need to take a virus and deliberately infect Mac OS or Windows. And the killer is, of course, if you don't do that really carefully, you can infect your whole network. Yeah. So we've added to tools in Parallels of 18, the controls, to isolate that network really tightly so they can be assured that virus isn't going to go out. They can still do the studies of it. And a kind of interesting anecdote, one of them told me that because they use this technique so often, some virus writers are now detecting when they're in a VM and they're turning off the virus. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. It's a, it's a, a game of you know, a whack-a-mole, trying to fix things and change things and so on. It's an arms race with those guys. Yeah, We've also the added features to develop. Go ahead. The, the old cat and mouse game. And uh, I exactly mean, right. you know, you, exactly right. but look, Parallels will want to make sure that nobody is writing a, a virus that runs on Windows or, or Mac OS as a guest that can somehow infect the host. So, yeah, it's absolutely, it's, it's, absolutely it's, correct. It's, yeah. So we've also helped developers who are using Visual Studio to do Windows apps and who are using Linux apps and want to be able to do a net install, a net boot of them in, on the, in Parallels desktop. So these are the features that are in the Pro Edition. 
Of course, everything I mentioned in the standard edition is also in pro. And we'll move now to business. The main customer for business edition is not the end user. The customer is the IT admin, because he's the person that signs the check and he's the person that has to deal with things. So our focus has been make that person's job easier. Make it easier for him to him or her to deploy Windows 11 machines, which was a, was a challenge before. Mm-hmm. Make it easier for them to activate Parallel's desktop on the 300 Macs in their company without having to do it around to all of them. That'd be horrible. And uh, having to give a, a product key to all these users. You can now, if you set it up right with your identity provider in your back end, the IT admin can, fig- can, can configure it. So an end user can just sign in with their corporate identification and everything works the way you'd expect. Parallel's desktop gets activated, the VM gets downloaded, things happen. Yeah. We also made more things possible that the uh, IT admin can sit in his or her office and control various parameters related to the use of virtual machines at Parallel's desktop without having to go and visit those 300 different machines all around the company. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, we, we have to do that. They're, they're just, they, they go crazy otherwise. Mm. So there are lots more features that I don't have time to talk about, but if, if there are some things on here that you'd like us to talk, like to talk to me about later, I can definitely arrange either, uh, I can't do it, I'll arrange to have the de- development team talk to you about a particular feature and how it works. Yeah, I'm just glad to see so you with that, booting, booting Mac OS Ventura into a VM into recovery mode, which you might want to do if you want to run uh, Paragon NTFS tools. To, exactly right. To, uh, exactly run, right. So you being know, able that, to yeah. boot into recovery mode is very important. Mm. Being able to, we had tried to optimize Parallels Desktop 18 for running on Ventura because we believe that will be the host OS of favor in a few months. So um, those are very important. And we also wanted to make sure users could, could use our knowledge database and get answers to common questions easily without having to go through our support team and have the delays there. Okay. Now it's time for a demo. A particular new feature is going to appeal to some users and not mm-hmm. appeal to others. You're not a gamer. You're not, you're not going to care about the game controller connectivity now we have. But everybody cares about speed. Mm. So I wanted to start my demo with a speed with two speed demos that I think will, will interest you. So notice right now, look at my dock. The only thing running is Zoom. Mm-hmm. In particular, Parallels desktop is not running, Windows is not running, and no Windows apps are running. So I have Windows Access in my dock. I'm gonna click on this, and we'll see how long it takes to launch. I'm gonna click now. Uh-huh. That's about <laughs> three and a half, four seconds. That's pretty cool, I think. And if you open up a database, the responsiveness of the application is what you'd expect. It's very, very smooth and fast. I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. You have multiple Macs. Do you lose the cursor because it goes to the other Mac? Because <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I love that feature, except when I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I've, I mean, in the past, I've used programs like uh, I think Synergy and others to try and control multiple Macs before you could drag your mouse <clears throat> across from one Mac to the other. And, uh, but, and, you know, sometimes you're doing it to your iPad and yeah, if, if, sometimes you're, you've got multiple com- keyboards and you're typing away happily on the wrong keyboard and wondering. Exactly why right. Is I've had that happen. happen. It's a great feature, but I only want it when I want it, not when I don't want it. That's right. So the other thing I see on the, on various forums is people saying, oh, in windows for arm, you can only run arm applications. Mm-hmm. And of course this is patently false. Mm. And I can show you that by launching Task Manager here. <clears throat> and we'll see that Access, in fact, is a 64-bit Intel application. There are 32-bit applications running. There are ARM applications running. And again, I wish I could take credit for all this. I really can't. That's Microsoft. They did a great job. We just made sure it worked in Parallels Desktop. But the number of apps that don't launch on an M1 or M2 Intel apps is very, very small. Hmm. Okay. And, and and Windows 11 was the version of Windows that Microsoft allowed 64-bit apps 
for, for designed for Intel to run on, on the ARM platform. Correct. So that was the, probably the their way of... of their Intel emulator got better and better with the passage of time. Yeah. And I give them a great deal of credit for working on that. Yeah. I have one more speed demo that I think you'll like. Sure. So a factor that plays a lot in CAD applications or in games is the frame re refresh rate, frames per second. So in earlier versions of the Parallels desktop, we could get about 37 frames per second in 16.5. In 17, we got 60 frames a second, which at that time was the limit of the hardware. But on a ProMotion display like I have here, you can go much faster. Let me show you what we can do now. I'm gonna to go to a website that allows me to, to measure the frame rate. And you can see it's 120 frames per second exactly the, the, the spec I set in my ProMotion display. If I went and changed that now to a lower number, Windows will automatically change because we synchronize those speeds because it's needed for certain applications. Very cool. Okay. I now want to show you another a standard feature that's uh, used to, to gamers and that's the game controllers. So when we, when we changed it, so now all you do is go to system preferences and connect your controller to the Mac. I have a controller here in my hand. I'm gonna turn it on. And now it's connected. I go into Windows without doing any setting changes at all. And I go to a website that watches game controllers and you see that none are selected, no, no game controllers. All I have to do is press a single button on the controller and all of a sudden it goes, oh yeah, I see it now. So the controller's there. I'm gonna try a demo that failed for me this afternoon. I'm gonna hope that your good luck means it won't fail for me now. And it's kind of a cute demo, that's why I wanna do it. Sure. So I'm gonna, gonna go to, you know, lay my, my uh, Xbox controller on the touchpad and I'm going to test the vibration. And you can hear that vibrating. Mm -hmm. Could you hear that, yeah. And that we think that's really great. Um, we've now gotten out of the business of having to certify certain controllers. Just make them work with the Mac and with the new game controller framework from Apple, you'll be able to use it in Windows with us. And we, I think that's just great. Parallels keeps on making sure that Windows runs better on a Mac than it does on uh, Windows, even if it's the ARM version. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, this notion of just make it work on the Mac and we'll connect it behind the scenes. I'm looking forward to seeing that in more and more features in future versions of Parallels Desktop. It's so slick and mm. so easy that I want people to, to have that mindset. If I can work on it works on the Mac, it'll work in Parallels Desktop. And that would be great. I wanted to show you something about the um, startup. As you know, because you've installed Parallels Desktop, mm -hmm. when you first launch it on a new machine, you get this dialogue that says, I notice you don't have Windows 11. Shall I download it for you? And you just yeah. click the install button and you come back a half hour later and you've got a Windows 11 installation in your on your Mac ready to go. What could yeah. be easier than that? Uh, uh, I, yeah, it was super easy. I remember... It a year ago, trying to get Windows 11, and I couldn't find it. I could find Windows 10, and uh, exactly. I needed it was, to be it was a developer. A challenge. So, yeah, we worked very closely with Microsoft to make sure this worked, and it's really slick. You don't have to pay for Windows initially. You just get it and play with it for a while, and then if it works for you, then you should pay for it, pay for Parallels Desktop, and so on. But it's yeah. an easy way for you to test the game or the application to make sure it works for you the way you want before you lay out any cash. And, and a little tip, if you have a Windows 7, 8, or 10 key that you're not using, I, I activated my Windows 11 with an old key, and it worked. 10 key, yes. I didn't know 7 key would work. That's interesting. Well, I, I think I tried a Windows 8.1 key, and uh, but I think a 7 key that would work as well. Yeah, it worked. Yeah. I, I definitely have some old keys laying around. I will try that. Try it, I'll yeah. let you know. Yeah. So I wanted to show you one business edition feature because it's so well received by the IT admins and that's the single sign-on. 
I can't actually do it here from my home. So I took some screenshots to show you what it's like. So when you go to, to activate Parallels Desktop, you get this dialog and there's a button down here for Business Edition. Mm -hmm. If you click that, then you get this dialog that says, okay, do you have a key? For a small user that only has five seats, keys are the way to go. For a user that has 500 or 5,000 seats, that's crazy. You don't want to do mm -hmm. that. So that IT admin team will configure the back end with their identity provider. So it works with single sign-in and Parallels Desktop. And what the user experience is, click this button here, and you just log on with your corporate ID. The identity provider will double check that you're a, a registered user, you have permission to install Parallels Desktop, and if you do, it'll activate it, and it'll begin downloading the VM and all that kind of stuff. It's really great. And the IT admins have told us this is exactly what they wanted to have. And the end result is this. Activated, ready to go. So, so previous versions of Parallels forward. Pre previous Excuse versions me? of Parallels didn't have this. Did not. No, this is yeah. new in Parallels SF18. And I, I don't want to make light of the fact that it's you know like a day's work for the IT admin team to set up things in the back end to make this work. Mm -hmm. But it's going to save them so much time I think they're going yeah. to do it and be happy with it. Yeah. So well, there'll be not future like updates to come. That's right. There's yes. future updates to come, and they'll they'll appreciate it many times over in the future. I, we, I certainly hope so. We spent a lot of time on this. Uh, in past years, we haven't been able to do the business edition features at launch. We had them we waited until update one. We were able to get these in done in time, so I'm real happy about that. Wonderful. Now, you also know that we bundle with Parallels Desktop, Parallels Toolbox, and Parallels Access. Mm -hmm. If you haven't looked at it recently, Toolbox, I've lost my cursor. Okay. Yeah, to move it around. Well, one, one thing okay. you can do on, on uh, Macs if you have a, um, a mouse is when you shake the mouse, it temporarily makes the uh, cursor larger. But maybe you have yep. to switch that on. Because I, I, I don't see it. Do you see it now? It's working for me. Is it? Oh, I'm not seeing it go larger. I'm just, but yeah, obviously, it, it, if it's going for larger me. for you, that's one. Yes, it is. Th and so that's a, a, that's a good tip. Power, there's a Windows Power Tools uh, uh, utility it does the same thing on Windows, and I have them both installed right. for exactly Excellent. that reason. Yeah. Okay. So Toolbox is now a set of 50 um, single-purpose tools that do a variety of things. I'll show you a couple of the new tools. Uh, I'll show you one of the new tools. So encrypt files. I want to take a file. I, I, I was wrong. I didn't mean to do that. Sorry. I want to launch it, not move it. <laughs> okay, there we are. So I want to encrypt this file. So what I've done is set it up so it automatically stores the password I give for that file in the keychain. Because mm -hmm. I have way too many passwords to remember. I'm sure you do too. And mm -hmm. if you're doing it for individual files, you'll, you'll never keep control of them. So I take that, oops, didn't do that, right? Take that a file, drag it to the encrypt files tool, give it a password. And encrypt the file. It, by default, I have it set up to show up on the desktop. Mm -hmm. And now, if I take that encrypted file and double click on it, it will open up the encrypt files tool and ask me for my password so it can access the keychain. I have a touch ID in this machine. I'll just put my finger on the touch ID. There's the password, decrypted file. I can't imagine a better way to do that for a Mac user, gives them the feature of encrypted encrypting and decrypting files. And this is a good example of the way tools in Parallels Toolbox work. They do one task really well, and they get out of your way, and you move on with whatever you're doing. So, and, and if and if I send that file, if I send that file to somebody else, do they need a yes. Parallels tool to decrypt it, or or is what will oh, happen? Oh, good question. I it, it certainly is set up to be Parallels tools um, as the application that is used. I'll have to ask the dev team if I can decrypt it with another tool. I don't know. Good question. Yeah. 
But also, if I'm sending it to out, another, and I'll let you know. Sure, but and the other question is, if I'm sending it to, to another Parallels uh, Tools user, you know, do that? You know, does that system already just pop up and with the same dialog box, and I can share the password with them and, and decrypt it? Because you yes. could send same files, dialog will come up. They won't have the password in their keychain, so they'll have to yeah. give them the password, and they enter it, and then it decrypts just like that. Yeah, sweet. I nice. will check on the passwords and encrypted files and let you know. Yeah, I've noticed Parallels uh, Tools has been getting more and more featured as time yes, goes by. Yes, it is, and it's, it's really getting a lot of uh, publicity and a lot of use by users. It's still the case that download video is the most commonly used tool because it downloads from Facebook, from YouTube, from Vimeo and other sites. And I probably use that all the time. A tool that came out last year that I didn't think was that, that important, but it turns out I use it like several times a week is recognize text to suck text out of an image so I don't have to retype it. I do it all the time. And I, I deal a lot with Chinese and Japanese texts. Mm -hmm. And so I, I only work with horizontal Japanese and Chinese. So I asked the developers, guys, could you make it work with vertical? Because a lot of mm -hmm. our documents are vertical text. And oh yeah, sure. And the next revision of Parallels Toolbox had vertical tech support for Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. Like, wow, that's really cool. And I Very use that cool. tool all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know that uh, okay. certain M1, like certain Macs have the live text ability, but you got to have an M1 yes. Mac. So all the Intel Mac users will get that feature through Parallels Tools. Correct. And at the, when we first came out, we supported more languages than live text did. I think live text has caught up with us. Maybe we led the way, who knows? But uh, you're right. There are alternatives, but these are all so easy to use. Nothing to remember. You just drag it there, get the text, move on. It's great. Yeah. So that's my standard presentation and my standard demo. Mm -hmm. If there are other questions, I'm more than happy to try to answer them. Well, I, I think I need to uh, use more of Parallels Desktop 18. Uh, I mean, I... I noticed that uh, everything's very fast and smooth. I'm using a MacBook Air M2 with 24 gig of RAM. I purposely bought yeah. a larger machine because I was inspired by you. Every time you gave a demo, you had 32 gig or 16 gig or 32. I mean, you always had tons more RAM than uh, than I always did. I was always using the 8 gig machines. There you go, 64 gig. There you go. <laughs> and of course, the more RAM you have. Only to, only to show you up, right? That's yeah, the that's right. <laughs> no, no, but it's, it's, I mean, I, you've always had, like, you've always had maxed out machines, which is uh, because you're and, demoing and all the different. That's what drives the price of the Mac Studio so high. If you want a lot of cores and a boatload of RAM, the price mm. goes up really quickly. Yeah. So well, I mean, to work on that's my right. To get her to, to buy off on that. Yeah. Go ahead, sir. Well, you can get it. Well, I mean, you, you got to see if you can, you can expense it to work, you see? <laughs> I'll get that a try. <laughs> All right. I hope this was useful to you. And yeah. if questions do come up, I'm happy to try and answer them. Uh, like I said, we've known each other for years and we talked during the year with various questions and stuff. When updates come out, you'll hear about them. We'll go from there. Well, I really appreciate the, the demonstration, Kurt, and I'll be sharing this with the, my viewers and readers. And uh, I'm loving Parallels Desktop 18 and especially on a machine with um, you know greater grunt. But look, I used to use it on a machine with eight gigabytes and I'm sure Parallels has done enough. a lot of work to make to make sure. Enough. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you've done enough work to make, you know, for, for people to be able to dip in and dip out and use it. Um, but uh, obviously if you want to, to use it, um, you know, side by side more regularly, then you're better off getting at least 16 yeah, gigs. So you've got plenty of, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, thank you again. And, and I uh, look forward to being so. in touch. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you.